The United States carried out its first airdrop of aid into war-torn Gaza on Saturday. Three planes delivered around 38,000 meals into the besieged territory, where the UN says at least a quarter of the population is close to famine. Washington says the airdrops will be a sustained effort that, that Israel supports the operation. Tens of thousands of ready meals airdropped to a population that the United Nations says is on the brink of famine. The US says it's the start of a broader campaign, with the Biden administration trying to prevent a humanitarian disaster. And while aid agencies welcome the airdrops, they say it's nowhere near enough. The United States just airdropped 38,000 meals. It's not a consequential input. Um, it would be much better and much more meaningful to make sure that the crossings worked more effectively and that more trucks came through. So 38,000 uh, uh, meals, that's probably less than one full truck. For some in Gaza, the airdrop feels almost like a token gesture, considering the scale of the humanitarian crisis. The United States is part of this crime against Gaza. Today, America is trying to buy our silence by sending us aid. It's better for us to live in war than to get aid from America. President Biden approved the mission after more than 100 Palestinians were killed during a chaotic encounter with aid trucks and the Israeli army last week. He's under mounting pressure both at home and abroad over his response to the worsening humanitarian crisis in Gaza. The situation in Gaza tonight can only be described as catastrophic. Uh, the humanitarian needs are absolutely through the roof. Uh, families are struggling to meet their daily needs. It's increasingly difficult to find clean food, uh, clean water, and access to basic health care. Uh, there are increasing reports of uh, illnesses linked to malnutrition. Uh, we are seeing an increase in the prevalence of diarrhea, um, as well as other types of illnesses as well, such as scabies, uh, which are very concerning. While the meals will be welcome for many of those who can get them, it seems unlikely to have any real lasting impact for the people being hit hardest by this war. Well, for more, I'm joined now by our DW correspondent, Janelle Jamaleon, who's in Washington, D.C. Janelle, the humanitarian crisis in Gaza has been mounting for months now. So why is the Biden administration only dropping aid now? Well, the Biden administration had been looking into airdrops like these for weeks now, but they say that they haven't done so until now because of the logistical challenges involved. But what really appears to have moved the needle this time around is that incident that we described in that report we just aired, that incident around the deaths, around that humanitarian convoy where Israeli troops are accused of opening fire on Palestinians, trying to get food from those aid trucks. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty still around what actually happened there, but White House spokesperson John Kirby said that that incident highlighted the need to get more creative way, to find more creative ways of getting greater assistance into Gaza and at scale. U.S. officials really treating this like a key event that highlights the direness of the situation in Gaza. Also worth pointing out that this is happening at a time where the Biden administration is facing a lot of pressure over its Israeli policy, Biden expending a lot of political capital here, losing a lot of support among especially young voters here in the U.S. He's under pressure to be showing, to show that he's doing what he can for the Palestinians. But obviously there is this reasonable, de reasonable debate going around now as to how much difference airdrops without any kind of systematic distribution, will, how much difference that will really make. And is this actually intended to send a message to the Israeli government? 
Well, the Biden administration has been quick to stress that these airdrops are the beginning, that we will be seeing more of them at the same time. They're also quick to stress that these are not a substitute for aid delivered via land corridors. So the, a, so the message that the Biden administration clearly wants to send to Israel here is that it should do more to open up those uh, land crossings to allow more aid in. But of course, there's this argument that uh, these airdrops would not be necessary if the U.S. were in fact able to pressure Israel to open up these land crossings. And as such, critics say that the message that Biden is inadvertently sending is that Washington is unable or unwilling to use that leverage that it has over Israel to push Israel to open those land crossings to get in more aid. And instead, the U.S. is having to resort to what critics call a band-aid measure, these airdrops that many deem risky and ineffective. Janelle Damalo in D.C., thank you so much.